Hi everyone, welcome back into the uh, studio. I'm going to share with basically everybody across all of our channels here another rose correction video. Now some of these questions that I'll be showing here or these answers that I'm showing here are coming from a couple of students, Janet and uh, Anwar, that are in my uh, rose painting class. Um, and I want to share with you because some of their questions are the, their questions that they're ans asking me are basic fundamentals of rose painting, and um, they were s things that took me a while to figure out. So I want to kind of show you a, a process here or a little bit different visualization how to see a rose, and it's very important because. It depends on how you're painting. Now, for me, I came from decorative painting, and in decorative painting, we did centers of roses and petals a little bit different than what I do with what you see across our channels, all the different websites. Uh, I painted a little bit differently. I have a lot of decorative painting influence to see the rose that way, but it's not completely that way. And so I want to show you some stuff. And I asked Anwar to send me a couple of photos of some of the stuff that he's doing. And I want to share those with you because everyone will benefit from it. Because exactly where he is is exactly where I was, you know, a while ago, you know, about 15 years ago. And it's, it's where all of us is, where a lot of this, a lot of you send me photos and stuff when we see this. So let's take a look at this, okay? Okay, first, this is the basic rose of what it is and the construction of the rose. And it's difficult to see, first off, because the colors that are being used are quite a bit darker than the background. And so it's hard, dark colors overtake it. So contrast right between here and here overtake it. So what I did is I took it into Photoshop, immediately darkened the background, and you can see the strokes just a little bit more. First off, one of the most important things here this is what I used to do in decorative painting. This is a circle into the center here like this. And this is what some of you do. This is what we do in decorative painting. We circle like this, okay? Because it's making a, 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 you know, basically a circle. I do not do that. Let me show, let's break that first. So the first thing is, what I'm going to do is, let's just make a nice, let's make kind of a, a, a nice reddish kind of color here. I usually try to have the base coat of whatever it is, is within two values. So this is a value seven, okay? So I'm writing about a value seven, between an eight and a seven, which means my value of this has to come somewhere in there. It's, this is about a seven. We can make it just a touch lighter, somewhere right around in there. But if this is gonna be a pink rose, now you see this is just a little bit darker and that's okay than my background and that's fine. Now. I loosen it up. So here it started to loosen up a little bit and you can see that, but I loosen up my outside and I shear off the outside edges. That's where I get my lost bit here. Now, this is where the this is where stroke habits, depending upon, you know, how much um, you know, how much you've been decorative painting or painting other styles, this is um one this is what I used to do in, in, in a decorative style. We come in here and we circle paint the row, the center, okay? Circle paint the center. That's what's happening here. Circle painting the center. That's, a, that's, that's not what I do, so I don't do that. What I do here is, let me just take this, let's just paint another one right out here. So I'll loosen up, and I don't always just circle, I paint in all directions like this, okay? And then I'll shear off. Now, for my center here, I'll take this cooler color here. And what I do is, I put it heavier. You can put it heavier on one side. I'm gonna come down in where that center belongs and I'm gonna touch it. That's its darkest color right there. But see, my brush is not circling. No, my brush is pushing out like this and uh, done. It's, this is opening it up. We're not circling. No circle. Okay? So, I'll push it up there. Now, I'll lift the pressure. Not much pressure. So the paint gets softer. And if it doesn't get softer, add a little extender. Add a little water. Thin it out a bit. So it goes more transparent. Or push it up and around. 
push up and around this way. So we don't circle, no. You go up, up, up like this. And this opens up the rows. That opens up the rows. So see the difference between it circling around and this is pushing up and open. I like a little more contrast, a little bit more dark into here, so I'll push a little more dark. But I don't go, don't go all the way to the top. Just a little bit right down into here. Push it around. That's enough. So it's darker to lighter, to softer there, see? Darker to lighter. But the center goes up, 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 like this. Does not circle around, okay? Now, next is going to be the bull shadow. We'll take a little red and stuff. We'll push that bull shadow here. We can put a little red in there, too. Push it up and around, up and around. Don't, no, 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 no. Don't circle. That's decorative painting, which I did for years. And, and I don't mean that to sound wrong. It's just another style, okay? And I did it for years. I was a decorative artist for, you know, 25 years. Um, and I, I loved it. And I, and I still do. I still paint all different kinds of styles. It's a different style of rose. So we'll push the dark in here. Now we're going to have a shadow side and a light side, okay? So the shadow, like when you're looking at this one, you hear shadow goes all the way around. No, we want to keep this the light side. So just a little, fade away, just a little, heavier shadow down over here. So, boom, push this here. We'll push in and out a little bit. So here, it already starts to look like a rose. Here's the shadow side, the lighter side. So this dark color doesn't come up here, okay? So that's a habit. So when you look at when you're looking at here, the dark color is the same all the way. The dark color is the same all the way around, and that flattens your rose. My dark color is darkest right over here. That's where the shadow is of the rose. So that's the shadow of the rose. This is a light part. You can have some up here if you thin it out. Thin out. It's not as dark. Boom, boom. Just a little. You can have a little bit of shadow there. But down here, see, it's right down in here. Up here, it's right up in here. You don't, you don't see this, and this is the way I like to do it. So this is the shadow. I push this shadow right here. So I push that here like this. You don't see that dark color up there, see? This is the light side. This is the shadow side, okay? You can push more of a shadow onto lower side of the bowl here at the center also. And that'll make that center really pretty. So you can see the, the movement here like this. Okay. Now, so that those those three areas, the center, the bowl, the outside petals, are so important. And where you put that shadow is so important because if you put that shadow all the way around you flatten your rows so when you look at a rose like this it's it appears more flat because the shadow is the same all the way around okay so if i took this rose how would you fix this rose here just and this is this is the one part that i miss about teaching online is I love to come around to the students and I love to take those. So if I take this and let's lighten this back up to like a little pink here. And so I put that little lighter pink and that darker color right there. You start to see the shape of what this rose can be here. Now, let's take this shadow here and let's push that right down here, that deeper shadow here and lighten it up. We can even kind of leave that right up there like that, see? So that darker shadow into the center does not circle around. It goes, pushes up, push up, push up, right like that. So now you see the rose. Just by doing that, the rose that was here is changing. Do you see it changing, see? And then when we start to put the light side a nice light pink side here onto the rose. We cut across, put its light on just like that. Here comes your rose. There, just like that. There comes your rose coming. 
and we'll and we're going to talk about this in just a second here these outside petals so this right here is also a decorative painting rose and there's nothing too wrong about that it's just that each one is the same and so and that's my trouble too i do this i do the same thing i am a left left brain painter and I will do the same thing, make every one of my petals exactly the same. And what I try to do when I paint a rose is make each petal look a little bit different, okay? And so that's what I do. But you can see right now by controlling the light and the dark and the pushing up and around, we can take a little bit of this and push around like this. Push around and puts that movement, puts that beautiful movement. Over here would be softer. And all of a sudden, this, this is turning right into a rose. So instead of rounding, we're pushing up and around, pushing up and around, and turning it into a rose. Now all we have to do is to talk about the outside petals. And this was one of Janet's questions there, too. She goes, I try to slow down your videos so I can see exactly what it is that you're doing. Is there a way that you can just show us exactly what it is you're doing? Yes, I can. However, guys and ladies, artists, however, there is a problem that you can get that repetitive look to a petal, just like Anwar was doing there, you can get that repetitive look. So you want to be careful, okay? First, let's look at a rose petal, okay? There is what I call the petal stroke, the rose petal stroke. And let me just take a, let me do it more, more light over here. Okay, we'll do a light colored rose petal stroke. So here's the rose petal stroke. Basically when I, the rose petal is an oval and I break it up into three strokes. The first stroke, I push down like this and slide right onto its chisel, okay? The second stroke is the widening stroke straight in, right down the center, like this. The third stroke has to turn the petal the other way, so I just a little bit of push to the up like this, and then back down onto its chisel like this. So it makes this oval-shaped petal like that. Okay, so let me go through here on this rose real slow. I'll put a bit more white on it here. I'll push the petal right in here. I'm going to come in right in here at this angle. What determines that angle? I'll show you in just a minute. But the first stroke sets down, comes in, and slides right in, stopping right at the bowl. No matter what I do, I must stop at that shadow line of the bowl. That's normally where I'll push a little bit like that, too. Second pedal is the widening stroke. That widens it out. Let's widen it out, pull it down this way, stopping at the bowl. And you can soften it, shear it off just a bit like that. Okay. The third stroke, let me put just a bit more paint in there. Third stroke rounds out the petal to the other side, but then comes right back towards the bowl, stopping right there at the bowl, and you can shear it off. That makes the petal right there. Now, I... I paint them real fast, one, two, three, and I try to make all the petals a little different size so by turning the brush maybe this way, one, two, three, so I get little bit differences into the petals. Does that make sense? Okay, let's take a look. So I got this silk rose here and take a look at one of those there. So what angle? Here's the other thing, okay? There's a, a decorative rose, a decorative rose like this, the petals, for years, I bring the petals in like this. That's decorative style. They come in straight. On this angle here, if you look, if I put the calyx and the stem to the rose here, this petal is coming right to that stem. This one is coming right to that stem. There's that line. There's that line, there's that line. That's my stroking angle here. If I look at, this is a silk rose, okay? And, and it's good for you to get that. All of them join here at the stem line, right here like this, okay? All your petals come here. So as you turn this rose, there's your petal angles, see? 
comes right down to that calyx. So if you look at a back one that's right here, look at the, the angle of this one right here, it's going to go right down to that calyx, right down in there. As I turn the rose around to look at other petals, where's that petal coming down? Right, right there to that calyx, right to that point there. Look at this one right here. Where's it going? Boom, right down to that calyx. See, everything joins. Now, sometimes you have the bottom of a petal that rounds, that creates the bowl. So sometimes you will have a bottom of a petal that rounds like this, but the top of the petal, the top of the petal can angle down and it can do all kinds of stuff, but it angles down towards that calyx. So you have the bottom of the petal, which is the bowl, the top of the petal, which is the calyx here. Look at this angle here. So this petal, this rose petal that's right here, the bottom of it here is kind of making the bowl. The top of it here forms that angle right towards that. And so that's why that's when you see me go in there and I'll go like this, put a petal on, and then I round it down like this. So I'm painting that particular petal you see right there. See, there's the top angle, there's the bottom. There's the bottom angle right there. So that's that one right here. Boom. And then this one rounds slightly this way, forming the bottom of the thing. Because everything has to feed, everything has to feed to the bowl. So whatever I'm going to do, if I put a pedal in right here, where's it, where's it going in? It doesn't go in this angle here. That's decorative painting. It's going to go towards that calyx because what you're actually seeing here, okay, when you look back there and you see the tip of that pedal right there, it's actually a very big pedal that is joining up right into the calyx. That's what's happening to it. Same here. Look at that here on this side. It's actually a big pedal. You may see just a little bit of a pedal back here that is actually, so you'd put a pedal back there, but if you pull anything, it's got to go down to the calyx here. We stop short because it's behind, but anything that you put back here has to head towards that calyx. And then the ones that are here in the front that actually create the bowl you can see the roundness, and you can see the bowl here. See the bowl? That's the bowl of the rose right there. Okay? And so I create the roundness, the top of that petal there. And then down, as these come down, they create the bowl of the rose right in there like that. So, and there's a thousand ways, just like there's a thousand roses, there's a thousand ways to stroke those. But if you look at those petals as three strokes, one, two, three, all heading here towards this. But as you come to the front, you know, you you might curve and center and curve. The big thing is don't get locked into making every single one of them exactly the same size. That will hurt your rows. So try to... You know, just like on a real rose, the, each one of the petals, they all vary and stuff. Try to vary the petals on your rose here. So, you know, we'll have a light petal. That's the top of it. The bottom of this one is the bowl. So it's got a round. So that petal has to turn and round. Does that make sense? Because that's the most important thing, part of it right here. So when you look at the difference here between decoracy... These are kind of curving around right here and they're coming in this way. If I put the, if I put the, uh, well, it, let's do it this way here on this one. So let's put that stem in here. That one's coming in at that angle is missing it. That one's by turning your brush like this, that angle is now going that way. So what you need to make that a beautiful petal here let's just put it pink here so what you need here to make that a beautiful petal is to bring that bring this petal in here towards that calyx boom right in there like that one two three in stop at the bowl there 
Now you have your rows coming, see? So they don't get multiple strokes pulling in this way. They, it's always going to head. So this one, this stroke here is going in that way. It should actually go that way, right across like that, towards that calyx. Shouldn't go in. It should go towards that calyx there. Okay? So, and that's the beautiful thing you know, about what we do. And one of the things that I love to do in all of my classes and with all of my students and everything, we share. Because we're all at different levels and we all do different things and we all have different habits, but we all have one common goal and that's to paint a beautiful rose. And we can do that. And I love to to share and I love to show and there's, you know, um, because questions like this, you know, might click into you and say, okay, that's what I did wrong. But also remember that if you don't practice that and everything, that habit is going to come back and what you see today, you'll lose tomorrow if you don't practice it and set it in, okay? And uh, so it's all about figuring out a way. I used to sit down for hours with roses, real roses, and, and uh, silk roses and everything like that and study them and study and I used to pull apart beautiful roses and I looked at their petals and stuff and how do they all come together and I tried all different kinds of styles and it took me a long time because I was a decorative painter for so many years and decorative painting has certain ways of stroking in very very much like what you see here. And that's why whenever I see the circling of the center here, I can tell someone who's done a lot of decorative roses and or is just learning a rose for the first time because that's the natural habit. If we, if we say the center's a circle, we paint in a circle. That's the natural habit. But uh, I don't do that. I push up and around. So you can see the difference here, how it goes down. And sometimes on your roses, that's why you always see me in all the lessons. I put my movement line in pretty soon, that stem line. I draw that stem line in because that stem line tells me the angle that I have to paint. Now, right here, that's at the wrong angle. That's coming up here. That one needs to come in here at that angle. And all of a sudden, there's my rose. See? So as soon as I stroke anything back down at that angle... Here's this one at that angle there, pulling in there. That one's pulling in that one there. Everything, no matter what you're doing, is joining in at, to that calyx. And you can see that. Now we stop for the bowl, but you can see there's your rows coming in that way. How many? One. One down sets the angle. One down sets the width. One down sets the other side. One, two, three. And then try to vary the sizes, okay? I'm a little bit hesitant to say one, two, three, one, two, three, because then you'll get all of them the same size. But it's just all part of learning, too. I did one, two, three roses for mm, five or six years before I was able to see it and correct it again, okay? So push up, push out like that. Get that darker shadow over here, darker shadow over here. Then Start your petals stopping at the bowl, wherever they're coming to the bowl. You determine that, whether it's a bigger petal out here, shorter, or whatever. But everything, everything goes to the calyx. That's where it joins in. That's the glue. So everything should flow to that calyx, okay? All right. Hopefully that helps you. And like I say, if you have any you know, special thank you to uh, Anwar for selling me those photos, and to Janet for asking those questions and stuff, and they're coming out of my classroom. Um, and I just thought their questions were so important because so many of you are doing that, and I'm seeing that in the academies and posting photos. We can correct anything. We just got to get you to see it, and and that's the whole point. You know, I know about learning how to see it. You know, it's and this is what I did for years and years and years till I could see it. Okay, and uh, so. Thank you guys for uh, for allowing me to show that to uh, to use those samples and because it helps a lot of you. Okay, it helps a lot of you hopefully, but it's still going to take practice. Okay, still going to take practice to break some of those habits and learn how to see it. All right, we'll do more. Okay, I'll see you on the next one.